Epoch of Reionization is a time period in the beginning of the universe when the first stars and galaxies started to form. We know a significant amount about the cosmic microwave background, which happened before, and we know a lot about the modern universe because we live in it, but we don't know much about the time period in between, and there could be some really interesting physics going on. I'm Nicole Berry. Uh, I work at the University of Melbourne as a postdoctoral researcher, and I work on the Murchison Wide Field Array trying to detect the epic of reionization. My name is Sven Buda. I work at ANU and I work on the Galar survey. My name is Ri O. Uh, I am an Astro 3D postdoc based at Australian National University and I am a part of SEMI and Hector 3D Spectroscopy Survey. The Epic of Reionization observations, that side of Astro 3D, uh, overlaps very well with theory. We kind of have an idea of what we're looking for, but at the same time we don't. So we need a lot of input from theorists. And so what we actually try to do is we try to measure the spaces in between. So instead of actually looking for the first stars and galaxies, we look for the hydrogen that's in between them to try to make a negative image of the universe as it's becoming the modern universe. We all want to really figure out the origin of the elements. Uh, some people are very interested in the nucleosynthesis of stars. Some other people are more interested in galaxies. Uh, and we're interested in stars as part of one galaxy, our Milky Way. Um, so we're really basically connecting different, different parts of Astro 3D. We have this idea, this hypothesis, that stars that have been born together in the same area very likely have the same chemistry. So when we observe the light from the stars, split it up into the different wavelengths, we can basically extract um, from absorption lines how abundant these elements are, and we can basically get a signature, a chemical composition signature of the stars. Basically, the idea is similar to stellar DNA. The SEMI team has three key questions. What is the role of the environment to the rotation of the galaxies? The second one is, what is the interplay between the growth of the mass of the galaxies and the rotation of the galaxies? And the third one is, uh, what is the role of the inflow and the outflow of the gas to the, the star formation of the galaxies? We have already observed up to 800,000 stars. We want to observe even more because that increases the chances of finding disrupted clusters. But so far, basically, the aim is to publish as many stars as possible every year and their element abundances uh, for the community to work with. Well, we've made huge strides this past year. Australia is pushing the forefront of epoch of reionization measurements. I just had a paper that uh, got released that are the closest measurements to the epoch of reionization that we've ever gotten. So it's, it's exciting. This year, I have published a paper uh, for the spectroscopic blue disk decomposition for 826 semi galaxies. This is the largest sample for spectroscopic blue disk decomposition and also the first sample including all morphological types of galaxies in the sample from early types to the late spiders. I have decided to be an astronomer when I was early secondary school. Uh, at the time, I was good at science and my science teacher liked me a lot. So one day the, she called me and my friend and, and said that she has a ticket for a science concert. I found beautiful pictures on the wall. I was very in shock because I have never thought about this beautiful object in the sky. So at that moment I decided to be an astronomer. So at the very beginning when I had to decide what I'm going to study, I wanted to do actually economy. Didn't make it into the university I wanted to and then decided, hmm. Let's do physics. Uh, I don't know why. It worked out somehow, and yeah, I was always somehow interested in, in astronomy itself. I started to get interested in the, the larger questions of like, what is dark energy? What is dark matter? What is all this? Went down that road, and it just naturally led me to radio astronomy, because that's where we're looking for the biggest questions. I really love how it brings together astronomers from a variety of different fields. 
I find myself collaborating with astronomers scientifically that I normally wouldn't, and so it's kind of opened up my horizons. I really like this community here. We're all part of it, we all do things together, we support each other. This is, I think, really unique. I have so many opportunities to attend. SS3D really cares and supports members to train themselves. Thank you.